Um, thank you, Catherine, and thank you, Clémence, for your amazing presentations. Um, so we are going to start the Q&A session. Um, I want to start with a few, with uh, just a, ca a question for Catherine. Um, so as a fellow mathematician, how was your experience as a female mathematician in... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it depends. I think it's uh, very different uh, from what is the situation now. So I don't want to discourage you at all <laughs> with my own experience. Some parts were very good uh, because uh, I was in Orsay and uh, the team uh, included, uh, for instance, uh, Bernadette perrin rioux and uh, later on Claire Voisin, so very brilliant uh, mathematician. So I couldn't say, uh, you know, I don't have model, so I, I couldn't have any excuse uh, so I had to do something, uh, and that was good, I think. But uh, in other situations and in other um, uh, settings, it was more difficult. For instance, I remember with horror uh, some conferences uh, in Oberwolfa, it's a very famous uh, center in mathematics, where uh, there were no closed door for the rooms because uh, all mathematicians uh, being the same, uh, we can uh, leave our doors open. And uh, I will not comment uh, more, but you can imagine what it means. We were four women and uh, 40 men uh, in a closed uh, setting for one week. And I would really have appreciated to have uh, the possibility to close my door at some times. But uh, now you can close the door, so things have changed for the best. <laughs> Thank you for your, your answer. Uh, does anyone have a, a question? Uh, so, so, yes? Do you want a mic? Okay. Oh, I can speak loudly. By July, we will have new uh, faces on the coins of 10, 20, and 50 cents in euro. One of them will be Marie Curie. <laughs> what do you think about it? The other one are Josephine Baker and Simone Day. <laughs> what do you think of Marie Curie on your pocket? <laughs> well, I think that next time I interview kids and teenagers, they will say about, who do you know as a scientist? They will be like, the, the one on the coin. <laughs> For now, it's the one on the, the name of the bus, you know? the So, yeah. In, in a way, we need these figures, we need these public figures because obviously we've got the, 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 the heads of men everywhere and the names of men in all our, our cities and, uh, and, uh, and public spaces, so we need them. But this was such um, a consensual choice that, yeah, it's, it's ambivalent. Do you have an, uh, an answer? Um. It's not an answer, but uh, simply we have, I suppose you know all, a new ambassador for mathematics in France. <laughs> yes, Eva Gilles, and that's an idea of our Prime Minister, I will not comment it. She is, the, um, uh, she is a student in mathematics, bachelor student, and she's Miss France. And because she's Miss France, uh, uh, our President thought that it would be <laughs> inspiring. So uh, I think it's... Uh, uh, I've, I was very ambivalent when I heard that, and I have uh, nothing against her. But uh, it's true that uh, I wouldn't have been very inspired, I must say, <laughs> by this. And I wondered uh, how you, you react to this, even more than Marie Curie, perhaps. Okay. Uh, do you have a question? Yes. Um, so you mentioned that you spoke about the fact that um, young girls need to hear from um, relat relatable uh, women in science and not just hearings. And uh, you also um, gave us the quote uh, of that engineer in the mm -hmm. math camp saying, uh, we are treated equ equally. Yes. Um, uh, my question is, when speaking to young girls about the place in women in mathematics, should we uh, put the emphasis on um, good experiences like that of that engineer by saying, uh, in my experience in math, I have um, faced no um, discrimination. Or uh, should we, um, because you seem to say that the, the words of this, of this engineer were somehow, somehow hurtful, but yes. uh, mm. on the other hand, I'm afraid that if you tell young girls that uh, half of um, mathematicians 
of women mathematicians get sexually harassed at work, they are going to come to the conclusion that they are not going to be uh, researchers. Yes, it's a, it's a very complicated issue and I really uh, made a choice and picked a side on this one. Uh, I think as a sociologist, basically my job is based on the idea that telling people the truth is better. And, uh, and that it will make them, and that they will need to really understand the situation they are in or they are going to be in in order to have more power over it. It's, it's the classical idea that if you know something, then, then at least you have some chance to act upon it. And, uh, and, and so I think, yes, it's better to go in knowing what it may uh, happen to you than going blind and then uh, being surprised or being overwhelmed or, or, or thinking and that, that wha that's what we get from studies. Uh, if, if women hear that there are no issue, there, are no, there is no sexism, no problem with equality, then when they encounter sexism, they don't recognize it. And it's not recognized as such by their families, their peers, and then it drives them a little bit crazy. Uh, high school girls we interviewed are really like that. They're like, <coughs> I'm not comfortable, I'm not confident in my abilities, and I don't know why, because my parents are nice, uh, so society is pretty much equal and welcoming to women in science, and still I feel weird, and I must be crazy. And they come to the conclusion that they are all individually crazy. <laughs> no, but really, they're like, it's, it's I'm the problem, I'm, uh, I'm too sensitive, um, I've got a psychological issue, and so this, observing this, observing these girls being so lost in front of what they feel, and this uh, feeling of a not understanding coming from the fact that they have no words, no explanation to put on what's happening to her, it really made me, it, it made stronger my belief that they need to be told, uh, girls, women, men, that everyone needs to be told how bad it is, not to discourage, but to not be in denial and, uh, and not uh, try and uh, put it under the rug. So. Thank you. Um, so you have a question? Yes, I have a question from the chat because there are people yes. with us online. And uh, people are asking if you have any specific advice for, let's say, math educators, whether it be in high school or in college or at university, on how to how they can make a contribution to tackle this issue. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> well, um, I could say something, but it will not be appreciated. For instance, uh, stop uh, uh, doing reforms uh, without uh, taking into account uh, what people specialists in this issue, among other issues, are telling. Because uh, uh, each time uh, we have planned, I mean, a lot of people have, have said there will be a bad, uh, it will be bad and uh, nobody has uh, listened and they have always said, no, 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 it's very good. I, uh, the association in France, Women and Mathematics, Femme Mathematics, was created after the fusion of the École Normale Supérieure. There was, uh, for a while, uh, uh, a school for women and a school for uh, men. Uh, we had the same exam and so on, and essentially the same careers. But they decided that uh, in the name of equality, we will put that together. And we said immediately that would be uh, awful for mathematicians, especially. Nobody cared. It has been awful for mathematicians. <laughs> but, uh, and so on and so on. At this last reform, uh, that was also the case. So that would be my first answer, trying to uh, be heard at a more general level. And probably teachers are, uh, are more numerous and perhaps there are more strength uh, to be heard. Now, uh, concretely, at the level of the classroom, uh, perhaps uh, it would be nice uh, to have uh, more examples of uh, women mathematicians as well as men mathematicians and diverse ones and not taken from uh, the first paragraph of Wikipedia or something of the kind. There are a lot of, uh, uh, for instance, uh, booklets, uh, exhibits and so on speaking about uh, contemporary uh, women in mathematics or in science, in engineering and so on. So perhaps uh, speak, uh, t try to find and speak about uh, these uh, diverse ways of doing science and not uh, Ipatia. <laughs> Thank you. Not Ipatia. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I wonder if um, the world of mathematicians is, uh, is uh, enough attentive to women uh, when it comes to uh, 
denounce uh, some people that are miso miso misogynist. And if we can uh, tell uh, the truth uh, without uh, being uh, incriminated, like uh, can we can we talk actually? Uh, you know, uh, it's more a question for. Uh, I think the, 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 the truth then, since uh, <laughs> <laughs> I promised. Uh, no, it's, it's not enough. It's not enough yet. And it's not only in maths. I think it's uh, in, in general and in, um, we have a, a particular issue in science and in universities. So no, the problem is not taken seriously enough. And we have many examples indeed of uh, a bad behavior, sexist, aggressive behavior that was uh, called out with almost no consequences. But uh, I want to bring a little bit of hope also, because I think um, that it's getting a little bit better on the um, pointing out and getting things done when some things um, uh, appear and are noticed and when some violence is, uh, is being denounced. I think there are a few uh, green flags right now, for instance, in universities and in, in math too, that prove that um, it's getting a little bit easier to get hurt and to not have uh, too, um, too bad of repercussions on yourself. I think getting in a collective is the best way to avoid being swept out or having too much issues if you try to denounce or if you try to protest or if you try to uh, fight back against uh, any kind of aggression. Um, obviously, there are the, um, uh, the, the feminist groups of women in science, Femmes et Mathématiques or uh, Femmes et Sciences. There are also now more resources at the, in universities Every university has um, an uh, equality referent now. It didn't exist five years ago. They don't necessarily have the time, the means, and uh, even sometimes the will to do something, but at least there is someone to call. So hopefully, I think it's getting a little bit better. And um, to, 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 to give one indicator of that, when I started, and I think um, Catherine will testify way more to that because I'm sure it was way worse for her. But when I started 10 years ago to say these kind of things, there were always someone in the room, uh, usually an uh, older male mathematician or scientist, to raise his hand and say, this is bullshit. No. Uh, it doesn't happen anymore. Uh, I think they still think it, but they don't <laughs> say it out loud. So <laughs> progress. Yes, I will say the same, progress uh, in, in the Bitly. And you have now reference, I mean, uh, also against violence, sexual or sexist violence in almost each university, sometimes in a lab. Uh, mm? uh, so uh, very concretely, on concrete situation, I think you can find uh, people to uh, listen to you. So that's much better. Uh, in my time, they laughed a bit and uh, say, avoid this person, uh, well-known person, avoid it. Okay, so now they will probably take it more seriously. And I think something which has really changed is the fact that uh, a lot of men uh, colleagues are concerned with this problem. And uh, I think uh, Emmanuel and, and Pierre can testify, which was not really the case uh, 30 years ago. So I think in this respect, things have changed. So. Let us hope. <laughs> I just would like to mention that I'm very surprised that you don't speak about women who are good genius, but they have PhD advisor who take them the mm. results of the, of the lady, of the woman, as a trusting bed. And I think we have to speak more about that. Of course, it's in the past. But I think it can happen. No. No, it's important. You see, the thing that proves the existence of Pulsar. And this advisor publish the existence, but without the name of this event. And the advisor succeeds to a general price. But nobody was speaking about it. There are students who prove the existence. And this is not the only case. I mean, just for me, it's the most important. But there was a specific uh, issue of uh, <coughs> science and admire about them. And I, at least for the last year, at least uh, 50 women were fairly good scientists providing some help. <coughs> this is in Einstein. It's true now that she clearly participated to the research of Einstein. 
I don't know that. No. Nobody speak about that. No, I'm sorry, I can't let you say that. And uh, so uh, this is one of the problems we have. That is, we have the myths in all directions. And I would like, uh, I, well, <laughs> Clément said, as a sociologist, I want the truth. And I would say, as a mathematician or ex and historian of science, a historian of mathematics, I want also the truth. And uh, I don't want to make heroines uh, instead of heroes myself. I, so I agree completely. There are cases, uh, you mentioned one, uh, in particular uh, in physics and Nobel Prize issues, where uh, women were uh, stolen, uh, robbed of their discovery. But there are also questions where uh, issues where women were uh, somehow uh, taken as a kind of uh, icon to attack men, and I think it's not fair. I don't like Einstein at all as a person, I can tell you. Uh, I have absolutely no sympathy for, her, for him as a person, but it is not true that Mileva Marik did uh, his uh, mathematics. It's, it's not simply not true, and it has been testified by serious historians of science. They ask the right question, I think, is why somebody like uh, Mileva, who was a good scientist, experimental scientist, in his own right, stopped doing science because she married Einstein and she clearly stopped doing science and we have letters showing that she was so in awe in front of him that she just stopped doing science and that's uh, I think a more, much more interesting issue because she was not alone. We have other cases at a, in her time of exactly the same situation and uh, so it's also a collective problem uh, interiorized Bizarrely, which is science should be made by geniuses only, and I have no place if I'm not Einstein. So, but uh, that's, that's a real issue, and I think we have to also uh, tell people, you can do a lot of science, you can do science without being Einstein. Uh, you can be Einstein if you wish, we have some uh, feminine ones. Welcome. But uh, there are a lot of places, a lot of possibilities. And I think we have to also defend that. But I will not accept that any woman <coughs> who can read uh, linear algebra, which is, was the case, uh, is, has been stolen of important ideas. That's something else. Okay. Sorry, but here I am really. <laughs> okay. So um, I suggest. Yeah, I suggest we take one final question and uh, then we continue the discussion around the cocktail. So. Yes. 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 Pourquoi les maths est un milieu plus discriminatoire que les maths et l'informatique aussi Un peu plus discriminatoire que par exemple, j'ai l'impression que quand je vois en amphi, il y a plus de, de filles en bio et dans ce maths. Ce la question est, pourquoi est-ce que les mathématiques en particulier plus discriminatoires que, par exemple, les sciences sciences ou la biologie um, This is a question that has a lot of answers in the book. <laughs> so, no. But uh, um, th the short answer to that is that um, the way people pick a subject and participate in, uh, in science is deeply related to the position they occupy in society, their gender and also their social class. And so you have to compare the values and representation that are linked to a subject, to the value and representation that are linked to men, women and different social classes. And then you see that there are some science and bodies of knowledge that are deemed pure, abstract, um, a work of the mind only, such are mathematics but also philosophy. There you find way more men but also way more people from the higher classes. Then you have sciences and bodies of knowledge that are deemed, and I say deemed because they are not uh, in absolute, they are pictured and, uh, and constructed like that. But some of them are, are, are deemed to be more linked with uh, application, building things, creating things, finding solutions to concrete problems. This can be engineering, this can also be some part of computer sciences. 
There, when you have more applicability, well, it depends on what. If you are working on um, objects, machines, and things like that, then you have more men and also more people from the working class. But then every science that is linked in our imagination and representations with living things and with taking care of living things, then you have women. So medicine, taking care of people. Veterinary science, taking care of animals. Uh, I'm uh, categorizing here a bit uh, harshly, but uh, biology or chemistry, here you have the living part and, the, and then the caring part. And then those sciences and, and uh, bodies of knowledge are deemed more compatible with femininity, what is supposed to be femininity. So that's a very, very short and, um, uh, explanation of why more women in biology, medicine, chemistry, why more men in math, engineering, um, computer sciences, but also why the difference in social classes, and they are huge and sometimes even bigger than the gender differences. But if you want to know more, um, all of this is documented, so <laughs> it's, uh, you can find it in the, in the book also with uh, numbers and more explanations on that. So let us thank the speaker once again.